Uh, welcome to the Falls Township Board of Supervisors meeting for November 21st, 2017. Apologize for the little bit of a delayed uh, beginning here. We had a couple of uh, legal issues to work out regarding one of our agenda items. Um, we'll begin uh, with the salute to the flag, please. Thank you, Mrs. Pullen. Mr. Galloway, Mr. Brasky. Here. Mr. Harvey. Here. Mr. Dent. Here. Mr. Rocco. Here. Uh, let the record show Mr. Galloway had a work commitment this evening, uh, so he was not able to be here with us. Um, we're going to begin uh, with the presentation of a couple of new uh, contests. Uh, Brian Andrews is here, for Park and Rec Director, uh, and he's uh, a lot of. Uh, Happy winners, I guess, in the audience that he's going to be announcing and, and presenting some certificates to. Okay. I'm also here with Ralph Asplund from the Park and Recreation Board who's going to assist me. How's everyone doing? It's been a while. Uh, really happy we have a couple new contests this year. Actually, this is the second year for the Halloween house decorating contest. The Scarecrow contest, is it's the first year. So the first awards we're going to present are for the Halloween house decorating contest. I'm going to ask all winners to come up here to receive their certificate and a gift card. They got a Dunkin' Donuts gift card in addition to their certificate. Um, third place in the Halloween house decorating contest from 724 Austin Drive is Dan Parks. I don't think Dan can make it tonight. I'll, I'll accept the award and make sure I get it to him in a timely fashion. Second place winners from 206 Winding Way, John Winers and Kristen Glazer. Stay up here, Will. Okay. And our first place winner. In the Halloween House Decorating Contest from 64 Eventide Lane, Laura Simpson. <laughs> if any of the board members want to come take a picture, you're more than welcome. Okay, this is our first annual, well it's not an annual, it's our first Scarecrow contest ever. Down at the community park, our Parks and Recreation Board had a great idea to have a scare ma Scarecrow making contest. And we got, we got a lot of good response for it, and I like the award winners for first through third place. Our third place winner for the 2017 Scarecrow contest is Cub Scout Pack 100. Okay, second place goes to Kira and Leanne Sebastian. Last but not least, our first place winner goes to the Pensbury Kids Care After School Program. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, they'll spread it around. You can get a lot for it. Trust me. Yeah, they get more than that. Got more. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I uh, appreciate all the work uh, from the uh, Park and Rec Board and also uh, our Park and Rec staff in, in making those contests uh, possible and a success and looking forward to a lot of future years doing that. Um, our public comment sheet uh, looks a little different this month compared to last month. Um, we have one name. <laughs> okay. Last month we were a little busy during public comment talking about uh, the Wawa. Uh, or that's a Wawa, the uh, YMCA. Um, tonight uh, we have one name, Mr. Guido Mariani. Budget night, so uh, I'll, I'll be brief. On Penn Rowley Road, between the two entrances uh, to Thornridge, where I live, uh, cars have been and are being placed for sale on the Gracie thing. This has happened before, and this area should not be allowed, or let's put a stop to it before it becomes a used car lot, okay? The people who are doing this know it's wrong. They knew it was wrong when they put a for sale sign on there, so hopefully uh, these cars that are there now will get a warning, a fine, and have their vehicles towed at the owner's expense, that'll put a stop to it and uh, maybe not happen again. Now, I know that during the last meeting, uh, this board's frustration with not being able to execute your plan for the new township complex. However, I'm not as disappointed as you are because I believe the cost of the existing plan as it was had gone up to what 26 million or whatever I believe had the potential for future economic Armageddon I don't want to get into that but we can think of a borough that had a problem uh, when they did that now after I had a tour of this building as a matter of fact I went with Mr. Rocco and his two children I did and I still agree this building is not suitable for its present use it just isn't so, but however, to say it's more efficient to tear down this building and rebuild it, I don't believe is true either. My preference was at that time, and it still is, is phase four, option one, which is an addition and a renovation to this existing building. I believe this building, while maintaining its existing infrastructure, can and should be renovated to conform and accommodate our present needs. And we could do this, I believe, well below the cost of the present plan that we had. The entire renovation process, I believe, will cre actually create wealth. It doesn't consume it. It'll be a wise allocation of our resources. Now, I note your frustration, so what I'm telling you tonight is 
let's not give up on a new complex. We need a new complex. This place isn't suitable to conduct our business. I know it's a huge, it's a huge program, but it's a doable program. You know, most buildings are renovated, they're remodeled, they're modernized, they're not torn down and rebuilt, and there's no reason why we can't do that. We defined and we identified, we analyzed the problem we have with this building. We know what it is. Now, let's identify and select the best solutions and let's get started on a new complex. I don't want to give up on a new complex. I think we need it, I think we should have it, and I think we can do it, okay? I think if we employ the proper option, the cost of the complex can be financed, I believe, within a five-year period without using any of our host fees. So I'd like to see us get started on a new complex. We need it. I know I want it. I hope you want it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other public comment? Okay. Um, I think the point about, uh, well, you know, your points are very good ones, uh, Mr. Brayani, as usual, you know. Um, but uh, the, in terms of the cars put for sale on that property, that stretch of, uh, of grass, is that our property? Do we own that? Let's try and find that out. And, yes, we'll look into that tomorrow. And make sure if, you know, if it is our property, then, you know, Mr. Mariani, I think is right. That they, you shouldn't be putting cars that are on our property for sale. We'll take care of that. Okay, thank you. So, um, all right. So we'll move to agenda item number, oh, and I forgot actually one thing before we started. We did have an executive session before the meeting. I forgot to ask the, Mr. Clark to give us a summary of that executive session. Yes, Mr. Harvey, during the executive session, the board discussed a matter of litigation and several personnel matters. Okay, thanks. All right, item two is a certificate of appropriateness for 26 Yardley Avenue. Mr. Gray. Yes, this is, as mentioned, this is for 26 Yardley Avenue. Uh, the owner of the property is Sherry Putnam. Uh, they, the project includes removing aluminum signing, replacing with hardy plank signing, uh, and that would be Country Lane Red Cedar Mill. Uh, this bit has been reviewed and approved by the HARB board. Uh, the board is asked to consider the certificate of appropriateness at this time. Okay, I know Mrs. Putnam is here. Um, are there any comments or questions? It's a pretty straightforward process. No, that's going to be a nice improvement. Yep. Yeah. No, and uh, thank you, obviously, for for making it uh, an even better, uh, the village even better. And certainly your home uh, is going to be, uh, yours, it was a nice home, but uh, the hardy plank will look great. So we thank you for doing that. Um, if there's no public comment, uh, is there a motion then to approve the certificate of appropriateness for 26 Yardley Avenue? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, item three. Um, Harvey, yes. Can we jump to item four? Sure. Yeah, we're the, apple, uh, the uh, applicant is still um, um, att attempting to address something, and they've asked if we can push this back to uh, the next item. Okay, that's fine. All right, item four then is the 2018 proposed budget presentation and authorization for advertisements. Mr. Gray. Yes, over the last few weeks, um, the finance director and myself have uh, met with the department heads and um, received their information in regard to the 2018 preliminary budget. Uh, at this time, we'd like to present this preliminary budget to the board for their review. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Rukoff is here, uh, turning on the projector. Mr. Gray, can we get the uh, the podium might be in some people's way looking Sorry. at the screen? That's fine. Is that okay with just the one light out? Yeah. That's fine. Right? Yes, I okay. think so. Thanks, Pete. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to present the proposed budget for 2018 for your review. If I could find this thing. Okay. The proposed tax rate for 2018 is 7.22 mills, the same rate as 2017. There is no tax increase proposed for Falls Township's residents. 
This rate remains the lowest tax millage rate in the past 25 years. Seven tax funds make up the total millage rate charged to township residents. The general fund is the chief operating fund of the township. The street lighting fund is used to account for the cost of electricity and maintenance of highway and street lights located in the township. The fire protection fund helps to support our local fire companies. The fire hydrant fund is restricted to expenditures for the maintenance and repair of fire hydrants located within the township. Our parks and recreation fund is restricted to the development of recreational programs and our township parks. The Falsington Library Fund helps to support our local library, and the Rescue Squad Fund helps to support our local rescue squads. That brings our total millage rate to 7.22 mills. The millage distribution will remain unchanged for <coughs> 2018. For every tax dollar that is paid in 2017, less than four cents was received by Falls Township. The balance was collected by the County of Bucks and the Pensbury School District. Our residents' tax dollars are used to provide a full range of municipal services, including police and fire protection, construction and maintenance of streets and storm sewers, recycling, residential solid waste pickup, zoning regulations, building inspections, parks and recreational activities, and the maintenance and replacement of street lights. Contributions to our fire companies, rescue squads, and the library that serves Falls Township's residents are also funded through those real estate tax dollars. What do all of these services cost our taxpayers? Based on an assessment of 30,000, a Falls Township resident could expect to pay $216.60. This is by far the lowest cost of our neighboring municipalities. Please note, our neighboring municipalities' figures include assessments for trash and leaf pickups, which are free to Falls Township residents due to our partnership with Waste Management. Some highlights of the 2018 proposed budget are our 2018 projected revenues, which include reliance by the general fund on host community fees of $14.8 million, reliance by the general fund on resource recovery fees of 950000 and additional projected revenues, including our local services tax at 680000 cable TV franchise fees at 745000 real estate transfer taxes at 750000 our building electrical and fire permits at 725000 and the state pension system assistance at 600000 our 2018 pension obligation. Uh, while the state pension assistance the township receives has remained relatively static, increasing by less than 2% in 2017, the township's minimum municipal obligation to the pension plans has risen dramatically. As shown by the red line on the chart, the township's pension obligation doubled from 1.3 million in 2012 to 2.6 million in 2017. And for 2018, our pension obligation is $2,832,336. As you can see, the assistance we receive from the state does little to offset our rising pension costs. The net cost to the township is projected to be $2.2 million for 2018. Budgeted expenditures from the general fund total $21,183,442. 55% of that amount, or $11.7 million, is used to provide police services to our community. Some 2018 proposed capital projects are our 2018 road program. This road program calls for the full depth reconstruction of Walton Drive from Lyons Drive to Bernard and Cher Drive from Elbow Lane to Bernard. The construction and engineering for this project is budgeted at a combined $2,862,800. Our Public Works Department anticipates the completion of additional mill and overlay projects on Biles Lane and Third Street at a projected cost of $30,000.
$154,000 has been budgeted for improvements to the intersection of Levittown and Mill Creek Parkways. PennDOT will provide matching funding through their Green Light Go grant. There are currently many dead or dying trees in the community park, creating a hazardous situation for our park visitors. Many of our trees have been infested by the emerald ash borer. We have budgeted $80,000 for tree trimming and removal. The emerald ash borer is a highly destructive invasive species of beetle native to Northeastern Asia. For more information on the emerald ash borer and the damage it causes, you can see our township website parks and recreation page. They have some links there that can provide further information on that. The purchase of vehicles, computer equipment, firearms, training and supplies, and various other equipment for the police department, $470,000 has been budgeted for these purchases. The public works department is in need of a replacement vehicle and mowers. $209,000 has been budgeted for these purchases. The township is in need of a new emergency generator to replace the existing unit. $110,000 has been budgeted to provide for a new diesel powered generator. The total 2018 budget, including all revenues, expenses, and fund balances, totals over $85.5 million. Based on the proposed budget, a total of $29,867,000 is projected to be spent in the year 2018. Budget schedule for 2018 includes tonight's discussion of the 2018 budget, advertisement of the budget on November 27th, additional budget discussions from November 21st through December 18th, public inspection of the proposed budget from November 28th to December 18th, and adoption of the 2018 budget at the December 19th Board of Supervisors meeting. And that concludes our presentation of the 2018 proposed budget. Uh, just a shout out to two of our township residents for their photos. The opening and closing photographs on this evening's slideshow are submissions to the Parks and Rec Fall Photo Contest by township residents Leanne Sebastian and Stephanie Langer. If there's any questions on the proposed budget, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Comments or questions for Mrs. Rukoff? Mr. Braski? Okay. Mr. Dentz? Excellent presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But that's all I have right now. Mr. Rocco? Thank you for your hard work. It's great. Yeah. Uh, and just to kind of review the process for those uh, at home, um, the process begins a couple months ago uh, when department chairs are asked to put together uh, their budget figures for um, you know, the coming year. Uh, they are then presented to Mr. Gray and Mrs. Rukoff, and, and they sort of boil down everything uh, and uh, essentially put together their proposal. Uh, they make cuts on their own. Uh, some other times, you know, sometimes with certain issues, they, they raise them with us. And then over the past couple of weeks, each of the board members, either individually or in pairs, has met with Mr. Gray to go over the budget in detail. Um, you know, th that meeting could be, you know, uh, you know, a pretty lengthy meeting depending on, on your questions and comments. Uh, and that gives us sort of the final budget this evening. So one of the things, just to let people know, if you, you see us not asking a lot of questions, is because we've already been, been briefed, uh, in some cases, you know, an hour or more, you know, just sitting individually going sort of through everything and, and discussing different options. And the briefing book, uh, and a couple board members brought their briefing book. This is basically the briefing book for the budget, uh, just to get an idea idea of what each of us gets and goes through um, and that is on top of other discussions we've had periodically throughout the year um, you know we start looking at roads we can do next year you know early in you know this current year uh, we're talking about what's going to be next what roads can we do how much money do you think we're going to have and which it's going to cost and, and you know what makes sense to do and what's really in need and things like that so there's a lot of this is ongoing this isn't the first time we've seen it um, uh, you know, and, and a lot of the issues that are brought up here in discussions is obviously not something we've uh, we've just heard for the first time. Um, so this is just um, advertising right now, authorizing advertising. The budget will be available for review. Where again? Township building uh, at the local library at <coughs> Fallsington Library and uh, Five Points uh, Bucks County Library, and also on our website. Right, so those are places people can get a chance to view the budget in detail. 
uh, and a month roughly from now. I don't know the exact date of the meeting in December, but uh, the budget will uh, be approved, hopefully, be, app be approved uh, at that meeting in December. So people will have a chance to kind of review things and everything else. Um, I don't, you know, if there's any comments or questions now at this time, okay, see no hands. All right, then is there a motion to uh, authorize advertisement uh, for the 2018 budget? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Rukoff, for all your work and everybody else, Mr. Gray as well. All right. So we'll kind of switch back into different mode here with presentation. Mr. Harvey, I would uh, recommend that you go to agenda item five. Okay. All right, so agenda item number five is consider adopting the Act 537 plan update. We had a, a brief presentation at our last meeting from Mrs. Metric, uh, from our, um, from the, rather the engineers for TOFA, uh, Remington Vernick, and she's here again this evening. Um, and the 537 plan is, this is a state mandated uh, plan that the township has to, or the uh, TOFA and the township both have to sort of present. Uh, and just a, a you know, quick, I guess, the elevator speech in terms of what exactly it's supposed to do. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Harvey, for allowing me to speak. Um, essentially, the Act 537 plan is a sewage planning, planning document um, that the Township and the Authority would have to use together to make sure that they can accommodate the existing uh, and future f sewage flows and needs uh, for the Township. So that's essentially what it does. Okay. All right. Uh, comments or questions for Mrs. Netrick? Uh, it just, uh, you know, for, for out of curiosity, I guess, wh how long roughly does it take to put together a 537 plan? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, it depends. Um, it depends on several things. Uh, the size of the system that you're you're planning for, um, if there are any complications. Uh, typically, it could take about uh, six months to a minimum. Um, you know, the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, they have an opportunity to review it and provide comments. That usually takes three to six months. So it may take six months to put one together, but it could take anywhere from, you know, nine months to a year or more um, before it's actually adopted and accepted by the Department of Environmental Protection. So. Okay. And so we're approving this tonight, and then it goes to DEP, or they've or, they've already looked at it. And um, well, they've looked at it before. Oh. Um, they provided comments. We've addressed those comments. Um, as as I explained last at last month's meeting, there were a couple of additional things that um, have played out since the plan was uh, first um, put together, and um, we're still working through getting all that information and pulling it together. But you know, if the supervisors um, consider adoption tonight, um, it'll be ready to be submitted, provided that the other pieces are are put together, which we're pretty close um, to that happening. So. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Any um, public comment? See no hands. All right. Then is there a motion then to uh, adopt the Act 537 plan update? So moved. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, we're going to move to agenda item number six, which is consider resolution to amend the 2017 fee schedule. Mr. Gray? Uh, yes, recently the state increased the uniform construction cone, or also known as the UCC charge, from $4 to $4.50. Uh, this UCC charge is applied to every non zoning permit the township issues. Uh, in turn, the township remits all UCC payments collected each quarter to the state. A resolution has been prepared to change the current fee schedule from four dollars to four fifty. The board is asked to consider this resolution at this time. And it would be resolution twenty nine. Twenty nine. All right. So essentially, the state in their budget process increased this pass through. Yes. I guess you could say, which of course we have to then charge for, since we passed a fee schedule back in January. Uh, which had a you know obviously a different fee. We now have to sort of amend that, you know, uh, with the resolution, amend that schedule to reflect the fact that we now have to collect more money than we did before. Okay. Um, all right. Comments or questions for Mr. Gray? No. No. Public comment. 
see no hands. Okay, is there a, resolu is there a motion then to adopt resolution 17-29? Um, so moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harvey? Yeah. Uh, may we have a brief executive session? Sure, we'll take a brief recess. Uh, Mr. Clark, you want to give us a brief summary of what uh, we discussed? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, the board just held an executive session um, to discuss uh, litigation, uh, essentially uh, the item number three and an issue that has arose with item number three, and also to discuss uh, some scheduling issues uh, among the board. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, it appears as if there is a, um, a notice issue um, with respect to item number three. And in an abundance of caution, um, we are going to recommend that item number three be tabled until uh, December um, 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, in uh, this room. Okay. All right, uh, any comments or questions? No. No? Okay, is there a motion then to table uh, item number three to until a date certain, which is, would be December 19th, which is the next scheduled meeting of the uh, Falls Township Board of Supervisors? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, aye. Sorry, I was writing down what we were just doing. All right, so. Okay, I'm sure I'll send okay. you an email. Um, all right, moving on to item number seven, consider authorization for advertisement amending the ordinance, chapter 198, taxation, article five, local service tax, section 44, levy of tax. Mr. Gray. Yes, as mentioned, this is for advertisement only at this time. Uh, currently, uh, the Falls Township has a local service tax, which is a deduction of $30 assessed on a prorated basis during each calendar year from the salaries of all current full-time employees in Falls Township. Uh, this pro rata deduction <laughs> is submitted to the Township quarterly uh, for these payments. Uh, at this time, the um, request of an increase of $22 to the limit of $52 is requested. Uh, this will take us from $30 to 52 and at this time the board is asked to consider authorization advertised for this amendment to ordinance chapter 198. Okay, thank you. As must, Mr. Uh, Gray said, the local services tax is designed essentially to make sure that people that might work in the township but don't live in the township, uh, although it does affect people that do live in the township as well who work in the township, uh, basically are um, contributing to the township's uh, tax funds to fund things such as police and uh, fire <coughs> protection, uh, rescue squads, roads, uh, repairs, and, and things of that nature. Certainly the people that live in the township get the benefit of, of those things, and they pay a property tax. And if they work in Falls Township, then they also pay uh, a local services tax. But um, a, a good number of the people that uh, do pay the current local services tax don't work don't live rather in falls, but they work in falls. Uh, and so they're getting the benefit of great roads, great police, great fire and, and emergency services protection, but they're not necessarily paying uh, you know, what they could be paying. The state maximum is $52. Uh, I think we might be the only municipality in Pennsylvania that is not already at $52. That's a year. So essentially it's a dollar a week. Uh, and so we're moving that from $30 to uh, $52 uh, for, for the course of the year. It is something, as Mr. Gray said, you pay if you're a full-time employee. Uh, it's not something that's going to be assessed on part-timers. It is not assessed on uh, retirement income or, or any kind of investments. It's through actual wages and salary. Uh, so people that work in <coughs> Falls Township would pay that, something I already pay in a different township because I work in Bristol Township. Um, and so that's uh, pretty standard. Mr. Um, Rocco probably pays it in uh, Hatfield, Hatboro? Or um, Blue Bell, I'm in Blue Bell now. Blue Bell, okay. Yeah. So um, it's, a pretty standard, it's a pretty standard fee and it, uh, <coughs> it would obviously increase the amount of money coming in through taxes by about 280,000, something like yes, that? Yes, $280,000. All right, so, and it is money that we are gonna allocate, the boards has discussed allocating that money to, uh, specifically to police functions and operations. All right, so um, comments or questions for Mr. Gray um, regarding the um, discussion of this? This is authorizing advertising for this amending this ordinance. No? No. no. Okay. All right. Any public comment needed? <coughs> See no hands. Okay. Is there a motion in to authorize advertisement? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
All right, next item on the agenda is consider proposal for professional engineering services from TNM Associates for the 2018 Falls Township Road Improvement Program. We have Mr. Sullivan back, uh, walking normally now after uh, some some surgery. <laughs> okay, to f you know, fix one of his wheels. You know? Normally, as I can walk, yes. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Abnormally. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Gray, you want to give us a little rundown here, and then turn to Mr. Sullivan. Certainly, uh, Township did receive a proposal from Mr. Sullivan at TNM for uh, engineering services for the 2018 Falls Township Road Improvement Program. Uh, this particular program includes Walton Drive, approximately 1,230 linear feet of 36 foot cartway from the intersection of Lyons Drive to the intersection of Bernard Drive, and also Share Drive, which would include 2,059 uh, linear feet of 26 foot wide cart ray from the intersection with Elbow Lane to the intersection of Bernard Drive. Uh, total cost of this proposal is $282,800. The board is asked to consider this proposal. Um, also, Mr. Sullivan is here for any questions the board may have. Okay. Comments or questions for Mr. Sullivan? No. No? no. no? Okay. All right. Public comment needed? All right. See no hands. Okay, there, is there a motion then to um, authorize the payment of $282,800 to TNM for the um, professional engineering services for the 2018 Falls Township Road Improvement Program? I'll make the motion. Second. Mrs. Pullen? Mr. Braski? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dent? Yes. Mr. Rocker? Yes. And by doing it now, we uh, can get sort of a head start so have some engineering underway so that we can hopefully uh, begin uh, the road improvement work earlier uh, in the year um, rather than waiting until January, February to approve this, which obviously moves us two months later in the schedule, and uh, we're going to try and get in as soon as the weather allows us to. All right, minutes for the t October 17th meeting. Any comments, questions, corrections? Excellent minutes as always, Mrs. Pullen. Okay, is there a motion to accept the minutes as presented for October 17th? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Mr. Sullivan, engineer's report. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. It's nice to be back. Uh, just a few uh, highlights uh, from the uh, engineer's report. The Vermilion Hills footbridge is in place. The, uh, the deck has been poured. Uh, the actual walking path has been restored as of today, and topsoil and grading will be done tomorrow. It should be 100% by Monday. Fishing pier has begun slowly. Uh, what we call a turbidity curtain, which is the, the um, thing that keeps all the mud away from going into the lake as we do the work. Uh, and the erosion setup control has also been installed around the, the work. The pilings are to be delivered Monday, and they'll start putting the pilings in on Monday. Uh, the contractor has assured us that he will be done with the fishing pier before Christmas. So that would be on or about the 22nd. <coughs> Walton Drive is, is substantially complete. It's 100% complete. The grass is, is, is coming in very nicely. Uh, there's a couple of driveway issues that we're working on. Uh, a couple of residents having issues with the driveways based on the grading that we did. Uh, we're working on those and we'll make everybody happy before we're done. Howley Drive, all the grass is in 100%. It looks great. We haven't heard any complaints since we did that again in, in early in September and October. Unless you've heard some that I have. Uh, that's all I have for highlights. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Questions for Mr. Sullivan? No. You said the grass looks great, I guess, by your standards? That would be by the standards of, uh, yes, myself. So I guess it was a lot easier having the landscaper work directly for us rather than be a subcontractor for the paver. We have a it, was a, uh, it was a struggle for a while, but it's worked out very well at the end. Absolutely. And, and the Walton Drive, after we finished the Howley Drive, Walton Drive was, went much smoother than Holly Drive did. So yes, it's worked out quite well. I haven't heard any complaints, so I guess it's good. That's it good. looks decent. I mean, I've driven down the street. I didn't get out and yeah. walk it. But. It was the same landscaper, though, right? It was just having... It's having the same the landscaper. Uh, they it's crazy, right? You, because you have control over it. Yeah, it could be weather. Could well, be the general contractor didn't care either. That's really what it came down to. Uh, you know, we, we force a general contractor. They have to force a subcontractor. Now, they're working directly for us, so yeah. it's their bonds and contracts are with us. We have that remedy if we need it. I saw the pylons were delivered already. I saw a picture of them okay. down there. 
I got bad information on my, my phone here. And so. when will they be get, being driven? Monday, you think? It's supposed to start Monday. Uh, it's not going to be, the weather is kind of getting a little iffy next week, but they can start, they can work in that kind of weather. All right. Thank you. What did you call those things that, for the mud? A thing. Call it, call it a call thing. The, call it a thing. That's the, the, thing? Yeah, the That's turbidity a... curtain is a thing. Oh, okay. The thing, <laughs> the, yeah. the, it's like a port dam. It goes in, in the water. And what? Port dam. dam. Yeah, port That's a... Really it's a highly technical is. engineering term. Port dam. <laughs> Sounds highly technical. <laughs> thing. thing was better. Port of dam. <laughs> it's basically like a silt fence they put in the water. Yeah. So muddy water doesn't get into the, the most of the lake. It stays where we're working. Oh, I understand now. Thank it, you. It's a yeah, so you don't want to mix the muddy water with the other water. Oh, I, I see what you're saying now. It's not keeping water from getting in to, from mud getting into the lake. It's the muddy water from escaping the area you're working in. That is correct. I saw it's a big orange triangle yeah. looking thing yeah. sticking out in the water. So thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sullivan. And the right now the plan to remove the docks at the boat ramp is what December, early December, another week and a half or so. That sounds correct. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, if there are no more questions, is there a motion to accept the engineer's report from November sixteenth? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jones never did it like this. Okay. Um, police chief's report. Oh, I'm sorry. Bill list. Sorry, I had the bills in my hands too. All right, the bill list. Uh, bill's a little bit, a uh, little bit large this month. Uh, we have a lot of big expenditures. Um, the total bill amount is three million one hundred ninety-two thousand four hundred nineteen dollars seventy-nine cents. Of that three point, roughly three point two million, one point nine million, is salary and benefits. Uh, also, additional uh, some other things. Uh, a new police car to replace one that was uh, destroyed in a, in a crash. Um, that came through state money. Uh, about $51,000 is escrow, which is put up by developers. About $38,000 in crime prevention fund is also a state fund. And there's also a disbursement of tax money to uh, the three fire companies and the two rescue squads that um, work in Falls Township. Uh, about a hundred and almost 120000 there, $110,000 there. Uh, and um, about six, well, several hundred thousand dollars uh, to deal with or to uh, pay for the road improvement work that we just talked about. And also, this is the month when post-retirement health benefits are paid to uh, retired police officers. And that, that amount is, uh, varies based on when the officer's retired, um, but it can run up into thousands of dollars, um, you know, for, for some of them. Uh, so just to open up to a random page, you know, one officer who retired many, many years ago, $1,800, and another officer who retired a few years, about 10 years ago, uh, $6,000. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the money that is paid to those officers for the remainder of their, uh, their lives as, uh, since as retired police officers. So that's always in the November and May bills, so those bills are much larger because of uh, those payments to them. So comments or questions regarding the bill list? None. Nope. Okay, is there a motion to pay the bills? Three million one hundred ninety-two thousand four hundred nineteen dollars seventy-nine cents. So move. Second. Mrs. Pullen. Mr. Braski. Yes. Mr. Harvey. Yes. Mr. Dent. Yes. Mr. Rocco. Yes. Okay, Chief, you're up. Chief Wilcox is here for the police chief's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I have no startling information this evening except that things have gone well since last we met. But I would like to recognize and remember a few people this evening. As the board's aware that we just had the uh, Police Association of Falls Township went out of their way to feed 125 seniors at the Senior Citizen Hall. They did a great job. People were very well taken care of. Mr. Dents, thank you. I know the other members of the board were working. They couldn't make it. But it, it turned out very good. Um, very nice. I'm very proud of our officers. They did a bang up job. I also like to recognize two people that have passed on since last we met. One being Henry C. Conroy. If everybody knew Henry, Henry spent better than two decades on our pension board here. He was a tireless worker. He was always there available to the police. I can only speak from the police department. But Mr. Harvey, you can speak about Henry. Mm -hmm. And the Monsignor at his funeral the other day called him the mayor of Fairless Hills. And uh, it was very appropriate. Um, Henry dedicated his life to service. He worked for the state of New Jersey.
but he also volunteered at Falls Township tirelessly. And uh, Henry suffered from a debilitating disease the last seven years, and you wouldn't have known it. Henry still kept coming in here and working. Um, God rest his soul, Henry Conroy. And the next is Madeline Jones. We all know Madeline. Madeline was here week after week, month after month. Anybody that knew Madeline, she, she would call me on Saturdays. She was involved in everything. At Holy Trinity Parish, she was involved in everything. She was here, noise pollution, um, the Wawa with the air conditioners, you name it, Madeline was involved in it. But her heart was always in the right place. Madeline was a good individual. When our officers got sick, Madeline would send get well mass cards for her. She, would, she was really on top of things. She would call me on Saturday and we'd have long conversations and, um, and I'd go, Madeline, we're doing our best. But Madeline was right on top of things. Madeline didn't have any money or wealth, but Madeline had character. She was a good, good person, and uh, she really cared about Falls Township. And just before Madeline died, she called me on the telephone and said that she was dying of cancer, and that uh, um, she wanted me to know, she, she just wanted to say her last goodbye to us. But I, I just want the board to know in the Pitbull Falls Township, she really was a good person, and she really cared. And that's how I'm gonna end tonight's thanking Madeline, thanking Henry Conroy, God bless them both, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so manager comment, Mr. Gray? Yes, just a few items tonight. <clears throat> First item is an escrow release for CNG Fueling Station. Township received a request from U.S. Gain, also known as CNG Fueling, for release of all remaining funds in their escrow account. Total amount remaining is $21,523. Also, all invoices have been applied to this account. Board is asked to consider releasing the, the remaining escrow funds mentioned for the U.S. Um, gain or U.S. venture account. Okay. Comments or questions? None. No. Okay. Is there a motion then to release the escrow amount twenty-one thousand five hundred and dollars and twenty-three cents to uh, CNG Fueling Station U.S. Gain? Is there a motion? Yes. Yeah. So moved. Second. Uh, Mrs. Pullen. Mr. Braski. Yes. Mr. Harvey. Yes. Mr. Dance. Yes. Mr. Rothko. Yes. Next item is a uh, letter from Mr. Sullivan at TNM dated November 3rd regarding escrow release number two for premium lift. In his letter, Mr. Sullivan is recommending uh, a release of $87,586.74. Board is asked to consider this escrow release. Okay. Comments or questions? None. None. Okay. Is there a motion then to authorize escrow release number two for premium lift? Um, go ahead. Hmm? Second. Um, Mrs. Pullen? Mr. Braski? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dentz? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Finally, I just want to announce several new businesses that opened in Falls Township during the month of October. They include CJ's Tires, located at 127 Lincoln Highway, Dollar General, 332 West Trenton Avenue, DMARC, located at 81 Big Oak Road, Soho USA, LLC, 8800 New Falls, New Falls Road, New Harvest Transportation, 225 Lincoln Highway, Suite 174, and CrossFit Yards, 791 West Bridge Street. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, board comments, uh, Mr. Rocco? Uh, yeah, just one, one uh, announcement. Um, on November 7th, I was reelected to uh, Falls Township Board of Supervisors for another six years. I'll be sworn in on, I think, January 2nd. Yeah. So I just want to thank everyone who, who came out to vote, and I'm looking forward to serving another six years. So that's it. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Okay. Just wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I know a lot of people have been questioning the leaf pickup schedule, and that's a schedule that's given to us by waste management. They're not dates that we pick. There's a lot of concerns because the leaf, the first one was on the 11th, and there's a two-week gap instead of every other week, I think because of Thanksgiving. I don't know why they chose that. The first one seemed a little early to me. Um, last year they got done early and I believe they added uh, an extra date at our request. But that's not something that the Falls Township decides. That's something that waste management tells us the dates. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Braski? No comment. Okay. All right, uh, a few things. I just want to, um, we did get a, a, a message here from uh, Ms. Quinn Kelly, uh, who is a volunteer, very, very active volunteer 
uh, here in Falls Township, um, especially with the Park and Rec Board. Uh, and uh, I knew her from, the I think, one of the first times, or my first year here, you know, roughly 14 years ago. She was active, and she, and she wasn't... Uh, you know, she was, uh, I think, barely an adult herself, and she was already active, helping out with was it three arches or, you know, with the Easter egg hunts or something like that. But uh, she is stepping down from the Park and Rec Board uh, because of just difficulty trying to get it to work with her family. She now is a wife and a mother, and and it's difficult to make all those things and juggle all those things. And so we want to thank her uh, really for for all the work that she's put in over like really. I think it's eight years on the board officially, park board officially, but I think she's been volunteering for a lot longer than that. So uh, it's certainly a shame to lose her. We'd love to have her come back at some point when the, when the maybe when the rugrats get a little older and uh, they don't need her around so much, or maybe they don't want her around so much. You know. <laughs> but um, but no, she's a tremendous volunteer. Um, and just echoing some of the things from uh, the chief, uh, both Madeline Jones and Henry Conroy, they were involved in Falls Township uh, in one way or another before I got involved. Again, um, you know, Henry again was a was a great uh, a great guy to talk to, and, and really a tremendous uh, tremendously kind human being. Um, and uh, Madeline Jones, you know, certainly didn't always see eye to eye with Madeline, but but I I, I echo the chief's point that she was uh, she was always very active in the township, always tried to make Falls Township the best it could be. Um, you know, and and so uh, certainly it's sad to see uh, both of them go, but. Uh, you know, uh, certainly heaven has picked up a couple of good advocates for uh, for making things even better, <laughs> so than they might already be. Um, a few people came a couple of months ago. A few people came to talk about um, the issue of dogs uh, and having them leashed and asking us to take a look at some of the ordinances we have. Uh, and I actually did have this prepared last uh, meeting, and I, I just forgot about it. And I apologize for that, but. Um, looking over the, the ordinances that we currently have regarding dogs, we already have a few, two ordinances really, 116, um, chapter 116, uh, section 2, chapter 116, section 10, uh, both of which uh, establish the fact that it is, it is not legal, uh, it is illegal for dogs to be allowed to run loose. Now on their own property, that's different. I mean, we can't control what people do on their own properties, uh, you know, with dogs. We can't require them to be leashed on, f on their own property. We can't require people to build fences. Um, but one of the individuals who was here talked about uh, a dog in their neighborhood that I think chased her granddaughter home from a bus stop. And I think she had a photograph of the dog sitting on like the neighbor's property. It wasn't the neighbor's dog. This was a dog from a block or something away. Um, and asked about, you know, couldn't we pass some kind of ordinance that could deal with that? And, and in taking a look through our ordinances, <coughs> we have an ordinance that deals with that. You know, it is illegal for dogs to run loose. Um, you know, they, um, in addition to being licensed, uh, and there are fines in place already uh, for dogs that are considered a nuisance, which would be dogs that do the kinds of things that that dog was uh, was doing. And obviously, there's also fines in place for vicious dogs. Um, and you know, the so there's there already we already have some things, and we've talked a little amongst ourselves about maybe increasing the fines, and there's some limitations on what we can do for that as well. Um, but uh, but we do, I guess, maybe that comes down to just having people make our police department aware. You know, if there's a dog that's wandering the neighborhood that's that's causing some concern, it's, that's something you can call the police about. You know, and I think a lot of people are, I know I referenced this before and I've talked to the chief about it, you know, people sometimes are afraid to call the police, to call 911 because they think that, well, you know, it's not really that important. You know, that's only for real emergencies. Well, no, 911 is a call. If there's something going on, you need uh, the police to come look at it. That's, that's what the number's there for. It's what the police officers, you know, uh, it's why they got into the job. It's why they're paid and, and, and do they work the, do the work they do is to do things like that. And uh, we do have an animal control officer as well that, that can go out and sort of uh, round up dogs that might be strays that people might have some concerns on. But you know, certainly it's something to, to, you know, to be aware of that, that, you know, our police department can respond to things like that. If there's a dog in the neighborhood that you is concerning, if it's chasing kids around, and, and if it's the owners aren't really taking care of it, um, you know that's something that the police can get involved in. So if it's just out roaming, not chasing kids, it's not safe for the dog right. either. Right, that's true too. Absolutely. Yeah, and it could even for for people driving could cause accidents as people try to swerve to miss a dog that runs into the street. So there's there's definitely that that's an okay reason to to pick up the phone. So I did want to mention that for people. I also want to thank um, earlier this month um, on Veterans Day, I went to a Veterans Day ceremony at the Delaware Valley Vietnam <laughs> Veterans um, Headquarters, uh, which is located in Edgeley, Bristol Township. Uh, and uh, they did present Falls Township with a plaque, okay, which we'll be happy to hang here in uh, the meeting room. 
Uh, I'll now read it. Delaware Valley Vietnam Veterans gratefully presents this award to Falls Township in recognition of your sponsorship and support to the Delaware Valley Vietnam Veterans. Uh, so thank you, uh, you know, thank you to them you know, uh, for, for the work they do. Uh, there was also that night an awareness program they held about Agent Orange and the uh, various debilitating diseases that, uh, and deadly diseases that affect veterans of the Vietnam War. Um, and certainly there's, there's information if you are a Vietnam War veteran um, and served in Vietnam or in some of the areas around Vietnam uh, at any point during the war, there are a, a variety of illnesses that can be traced to Agent Orange. Uh, you know, everything from Parkinson's to various kinds of cancers uh, and also includes uh, because the toxins did get into the bloodstream of people and was um, and the toxins were passed down um, through, uh, you know, you know, through blood basically and, and through other genetic material to children of Vietnam veterans. And so there are actually illnesses that you can trace to children of Vietnam veterans who, uh, you know, you can trace that back to Agent Orange as well. And um, Organizations like the DV3 uh, are really doing uh, a lot of work to make sure that um, you know the VA and other government agencies are, are aware of the fact and, uh, that these things have to be treated uh, as illnesses related to the war and to service uh, in, in defense of our country. So if you do have uh, anything into that nature, you have illnesses that, you know, that might not necessarily be just, well, you know, Vietnam veterans are in their 60s and, or 70s now, and well, these are just illnesses that people get when they're this age. Well, that's not necessarily the case. That might not be why these diseases might be hitting you. So definitely take a look at um, the Veterans Administration site. Take a look at the Bucks County site. The uh, Veterans um, uh, Assistance through Bucks County can help you as well, and the DV3 uh, can also give you some assistance and point you in the right direction. Uh, and finally, just want to wish, echo the comments here, wishing everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, entering into the holiday season and uh, uh, hoping everybody has nice, uh, safe and, and happy um, you know, Thanksgiving season. And uh, I'll, actually, I'll beat Mr. Dents to the punch on this. He usually talks about uh, you know, live here, spend here, and uh, yeah. small business Saturday. And he forgot this time, I guess. I did. <laughs> so uh, if you're going to go out shopping, you know, obviously, you know, some people do the Black Friday thing. Some people are waiting till Cyber Monday. But uh, small business Saturday. Certainly take a look at the businesses here in Falls Township and, and spend some of your hard-earned cash uh, here uh, you know, in, in Falls Township and help out your neighbors and, and, and friends. Okay, so thank you very much, and thank all the staff here for the work they've done. And uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.